Some are saying that they want to see Deuce in the starting rotation, which I get it. I get why you want to say that. I mean, you just watched him just shoot threes today. I mean, and defensively, you won't lose anything defensively, but I think the thing that you do lose, though, is height, right? And the versatility, like the way that I that Tibbs is probably looking at, at this is that you're going to have a weak defender of Brunson out there. Yeah. Right? He tries, but he's not the best defender, all right? Cat, not known as the greatest defender. I know tonight he was decent. It was against the Charlotte Hornets. As I said at the top of the show, we got to see him go against better teams. I don't think the Hornets are going to be up there. They may be a playing team, so we're between 7 to 10, but they don't scare me as an opponent, especially with, you know, they have a consistent roster. We have a bunch of new guys essentially trying to gel, and we're still in this game. Yeah. So I'm looking at what Hart offers is that he is, what, 6'4", tough. We've seen him guard guys like Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown, like you need that, man, especially when you have guys, like I said, Brunson and Cat, who are not known as great defenders. You need to like sure up everything else around the edges right. of those guys to make right. sure that you can guard anybody like OG. We're, we might see we might see nights where OG is guarding the center. Cat's guarding the four. Right. That's yeah. how everything's going to have to shake up. There might be times where, you know, even though Bridge is going to be designated as the shooting guard. You might have Josh Hart guarding that guy and Bridges takes a different opponent just because you want that physicality that Josh Hart will provide because, look, I've been at games where I've watched Josh Hart guard Tatum and he's deterred Tatum from wanting to drive to the basket and he's just settled for shooting three. So that's the defensive versatility and toughness that Hart offers. So I just think for Tibbs moving forward, this is what he's going to want. As great as a defender Deuce is, he just doesn't offer that versatility where you can say, all right, you know what, one through four, he can guard. One, two, maybe three on some occasions, but Hart offers a little bit more than that. I'm going to go with Hart for now, you know, and then let's uh -huh. see see how it works. I just think, you know, yes, with Deuce, he can provide that score and punch and the three-point prowess for sure, way better three-point shooter and more reliable, but I just think with Hart – he just can do so much and cover for so many people. Like, he can help Jalen defend. He can help OG on the boards. Like, I just feel like he's going to need that guy. And, and another guy that can help facilitate and help them play fast. You know, he can push it up the court in transition. He can bring it up himself. So, let's see. Now, when they get into the half court, it might get a little dicey. Let's see what happens there. But for now, he will be the starting, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, 2 three, four. He will be starting with that group. Until Tibbs shows otherwise. He's the roommate, man. You can't break up the roommates, Al. It's tough, man. You can't break mm, up I, the roommates, man. I, I agree with you in that mm, I'm winning towards Hart. Sorry, I'm just getting over a cold. Man. Yeah, it's all getting right, man. Go ahead, man. But look, I I agree with that, but I'm just gonna let's 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 play devil's advocate for a second, all right? Let's yeah. let's play. I'm gonna go from the, the angle of saying, all right, wh what if we put Deuce McBride out there, all right? So you lose a little bit of rebounding, you lose a little bit of that ability to push out and transition as a one man bad man that Josh Hart likes to do. What if though you add another shot creator as we saw tonight, right? And not necessarily as a guy who can just create. Uh, let me actually rephrase that. Not necessarily a shot creator but a guy who can just offer more to the offense. Yeah. Because Deuce, not really a guy who's going to break guys down off the dribble, but as we see, sidestep tonight, can knock down a mid-range, okay? And if you're going to have somebody like Brunson and Cat, who are just two guys you have to hone in on, like, it could be that you get more from having McBride in there just because offensively, he can knock down threes and is not afraid at this point to knock down shots or even attempt shots. Whereas Josh Hart, he can have that impact of just shrinking the court, especially in the half court set Could. where most time, most of the time Tibbs' team just runs out of, right? This is not real from having Brunson or even watching anyone on this team. When, even when Randall was first here, this has never been under Tom Thibodeau, a team that likes to get out in transition and really attack. Sure, we've seen second units do that, whether it was led by Derrick Rose, Quickly, Obi, all those guys. But even last season, this is not a team that's really known for pushing the pace. So is it to what if you just go a little bit more on let's have a lot of three point shooting where now you just have to be you just have to fully honor everybody out on the perimeter Rather than, all right, we got to worry about OG, Bridges, Cat, Brunson. We can wean off a heart if he's out there, and we can just kind of shade in a little bit more and protect the lanes. 
I'd say I think you have enough offense out there. Between Brunson, Cat, Bridges, you should have more than enough out there to get to get buckets. And then you bring McBride in there as your offensive punch off the bench. Then he's going up against second unit guys. He can impose his will. Just like you saw tonight, had a couple of nice steals. I think that's a more comfortable role for McBride. And then he's playing alongside Payne. He's playing off ball. Do you see, would you see Josh Hart? Because we just saw what the second unit did tonight, right? This The second unit essentially is a yeah. team that likes to get downhill, make the defense collapse, and then it's a lot of read and react for them. Just kick it out around the perimeter, look for the open man. That's what they did for campaign, McBride. Uh, you know, Sham Wow is now we're getting into. Yeah, I like Sham that wow. I do. I, I do wow, like yeah. that. I do like that nickname. Yeah. Uh, would Josh Hart, I guess, remove all of that from what you had tonight from the second unit? Like, or do you think even having because if he's with the second unit, as we've seen in the past two seasons, man, he just imposes himself. Yeah. In every he facet of well. the game, he does. Which, which you might miss. If he's with that starting unit, and do you get even more out of him with that second unit, especially getting out in transition, going against weaker opponents? No, I think that's fair. Uh, I certainly think that is fair. And and maybe that is how Tibbs goes with the rotation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Tonight we saw Deuce came in for Bridges first. He came in from Macau Bridges first. Yes. So you did get to see Deuce with the with some of the starters early in the game. If I <clears throat> done playing devil's advocate, that just says to me Tiz needs rebounding out there more than anything else. That's that's what I think. You know, you don't want to put all that pressure on on uh, on OG to to go out there and get boards and Bridges to go get boards. Like that's why I get my Mister Everything in there. Let's get to King Deej, man. Hey, CP, Alex, Mike, check, crispy clean? Crispy clean, man. How you feeling, bro? Hey, man, I'm feeling good. Let me get the courtesy calls out the way. Hit that thumbs up button for yes, your sir. boys. I, I know you had to restart, but we had those numbers rocking. I think we got, what, 890? Make yeah. sure y'all run it up. Make sure y'all share this space because <laughs> well, you know the number one rule, CP and Alex, is just preseason. Yeah. And then the number two rule is let's talk about preseason, man. <laughs> I like I liked what I saw. Honestly, I, I liked what I saw. Now, to your to you guys, the conversation that you guys were just having, it's amazing what a team looks like when we do a trade, right? Because now we're a rebound by committee. And I agree with you, boys. I, I got to keep Josh Hart in that lineup only because for the rotation, for that bench unit, I think you're going to need some score and punch. And when you have mm-hmm. McBride and Cam out there, or you have McBride and... and and, um, and Tyler, the creator, mm-hmm. like then, then Josh Hart becomes basically, you know, useless because he has the ball in his hand. He's the one that's gang rebounding while OG boxed out earlier, while Cat boxed out earlier. So I think you need to just stick with that, see how it do- how it goes. I don't like Josh Hart starting. Mm. I don't like it. Mm. I, I, I got to be honest with it. I know it's first game, but this is my overreaction. Okay. I, I just... You know, a lot of people said it. He looked at kind of lost out there. He's a great teammate. He's going to defer. But you know what? The best Josh Hart I've seen was during the playoffs when he had no choice to be aggressive. Yeah. And that's what I I, I want to give him the opportunity to be with that second unit. Yeah. In nine-man rotation, you're going to see a lot of players, whether it's Mikhail, whether it's Cat, whether it's OG, they're going to be playing with that second unit on stagnant minutes regardless. Mm. So don't so I'm not I'm not looking at at that whole that bench unit that came in as five strong. It's not it's not coming in five strong like that. Okay. Yeah. So I I would love Josh Hart to be more or less part of that second unit. 